Good evening. So tonight we're going to try and play Ars Magica and we're going to film sections of it, uh, of the game. We're playing on Fantasy Grand Unity, which doesn't come with a voice chat thing. So we're going to be using um, Zoom as a way of talking to one another. So unfortunately, Ed is so hideous that he cannot appear on camera lest everyone turns to stone. Ah. So let's start with Ed, would you like to tell us which character you're playing tonight? I am... Hang on. Tonight, CJ, I'm going to be Sir Walter de Marisco. So you're a brave and noble knight with a lady, uh, a wife called Anne, two children, and you live in Somerset. That's a pretty good summary, isn't it? You're a wealthy knight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, just as I'd like to be in all life. Uh... Okay. <laughs> so this is Ed. Guy who's actually martin martin good evening you all right yeah i'm good so you're playing guy tell us about guy guy is an archer and famed for murdering old ladies guy is indeed famed for murdering old ladies which was not intentional was it complete accident a fluke shot fluke shot yeah absolutely <laughs> and to be fair they did bring her back to life later via a very convoluted Really? Body swapping, soul messing around. Yeah, it was a. It was I didn't a strange. Know that was possible in Ars Magica, unless you have. It was the grail. It wasn't what it seemed because her soul wasn't in her body at the time when the body died. Ah. Uh, so yeah, who are from? You're not destroying Camelot. You're doing other complicated things. Exactly. Yeah. Lloyd. Yes. What are you up to? I am playing Hugh Bernard, who is a magus of House Flombo. Uh, school of the founder so you like burning stuff yes and he has a diabolic past which has um, turned up several times during the course of, this, of these adventures so far and a small fear uh, a, a, a small fear of things that go moo yes moo moo <laughs> a large fear of things stuff that go moo fear of cows which is unfortunate for tonight's adventure let's go down to Phil Phil are you painting something yeah uh, not at the moment because he won't let me Go on then, Phil. You're usually painting something. Yeah, uh, I'm playing uh, Doris uh, of Avalon. He is uh, a scholar, a gentleman, and a cold-blooded killer. Or at least that's his reputation. Um, he, uh, he's more of a hot-blooded killer because he has the uh, floor uh, fury. And he has a very unfortunate past, doesn't he, at the moment, because... Tell yeah. us about him and the fairies. Well, uh, around the age of 35, so that was six years ago, just before the Chronicle uh, started beginning, uh, he decided to sell his firstborn child to the fairies. Uh, he didn't have a firstborn child at the time, so uh, it was sort of like uh, not much of a deal. And then he got a nun pregnant. Yeah. And now uh, oh. he has a child who he keeps uh, hidden in the covenant so that the uh, Queen of the Furries, uh, well, actually, the Lady of the Lake, even, uh, does not come and uh, take his child away. And that is basically what's going on at the moment. I am kind of wondering which chapter we get excommunicated in. <coughs> Next up, <laughs> Anna, who are you playing tonight? Angelica Linnell, uh, ex miscellanea. She's of the specific tradition rustic major. No, that's not who I'm playing tonight. I'm playing Granale, one of the grogs, who's the daughter of a steward and, you know, very athletic, great runner. Unfortunately, at the moment, due to her taking a sprig of head, she's been turned into a cow. She turns out to be a cow who can draw. But she didn't really like being a cow. Last week she tried to jump in the well where the Holy Grail is concealed in the hopes that getting it out, kicking it loose with her hooves would um, cure her. But the Magi had other ideas and she was unceremoniously hoisted into the air by some sort of magic. So now she's going to go looking for a wizard who she thinks might know something about cows. I'm not going to associate Jellicay with this because Jellicay is always working with spiders, which frankly seem less like cows than humans. Fortunately, human. one of the older mage in your covenant, Des uh, Desdevarius, is an expert in magic relating to cattle, so you might be in with a chance here. Okay, Thomas. Tom. Yes. 
explain how explain the story so far what's been going on over the last few days in the campaign so um we mysteriously got a large herd of cattle out of nowhere and this greatly disturbed your flombo who is uh, phobic of such things it turns out that the strange frisian looking cattle sorry well uh, of a clearly um a low country's breed yeah. Um, uh, they wanted to put display a small purple brand on them, as if it was the sigil of my parents, who is indeed um, a, a tormenting master to my character, Scriptor X Tutelus. Scriptor X Tutelus never passed his gauntlet, did he? Oh, that's the one who I didn't call pass. It your master, he never passed it. So, would you like to explain what actually happened there? So. Um, his master would not let Scriptor pass a gauntlet. Therefore, Scriptor had to speak to the Quisitors, yes. um, pass the test that they sat, and then officially he was welcomed into the Order of Hermes, told the secret of the magic and all the rest. He is officially a magus in good standing of the Order of Hermes. Yes. However, his master still likes to um, treat him like his apprentice. Right. We're and he's been running around turning people into cattle. He turned oh. an entire tavern full of people into cattle, proceeded to sell these cattle both to the monastery of Glastonbury and to the townsfolk, and we've had to try and guide them away and tell them, no, 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 these are stolen cattle. Um, oh, it's truly uh, wicked who this man is. And they've, and they've given two different explanations as to who's been selling. Yep. And it would appear that my parents is running around in disguise, causing havoc. To make it worse, as I pointed out when I was uh, in human form, these are beef cattle, not milk cattle. So the main thing anyone's going to do with them is kill them to eat. So the real question is, do they taste like beef or pork? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We right. should this is the complicated backstory. The we're so the thing is that we've been playing this game for about six months, is it now? Yeah, it's a good yeah. one. Yeah, I think it's about six months. Then remember. And everybody's got at least three characters, a magus, a companion, and a grog. And because of that, the storylines become epically convoluted. And flaws and virtues that you think might never come into play become come into play quite regularly. The now, speaking of flaws and virtues, can I just add that I was in a different covenant of in, uh, originally, and um, because I'm so confident, just so optimistic that things will always turn out well, uh, I ended up getting kicked out of that covenant, and, and these guys welcomed me in. Yeah, uh, we're playing with three separate covenants in the same campaign who are playing on a theoretically weekly basis. And so there are 24 Magi in the campaign, I think. Oh, it's four now, yeah. 24 Magi in the campaign at the moment, uh, plus the NPCs. But I'm refereeing each of the groups, which may in the long term prove unsustainable if I don't get other people volunteering to run some. So, but we've got one campaign with large numbers of players and different covenants, which is one thing the internet lets you do. And as a result of that, people who are in very different parts of the country can also play. Should we just say where, we're, where we are physically tonight? I'm in Cheltenham. Anna? Hi, I'm in Himmel Hempstead in uh, southwest Hertfordshire, just north of London. Lloyd? I'm in deepest, deepest, darkest Cheltenham. And you're directly opposite Gas Green, where we hold Grand Tribunal every year, aren't you? Yes, I've got the, the longest, journey, longest, most perilous journey out of all our uh, yeah. delegates. Yeah, apart from those who come from Japan, for example, or Norway, or Japan, Norway, uh, etc. Yes, but you can actually see see it out of your bedroom window. In fact, you could probably pass me a cup of coffee out of your bedroom window. Tom, yes. where are you tonight? I'm on the other side of Cheltenham for the rest of you. There you go. Ed, where are you? I'm in Derby, in right in the middle of England. And Martin, where are you? Is in Peterborough, in the back of beyond. So there you go. Ars Magica players all from England tonight playing in the campaign, which also includes players from South Africa and the United States. So I 
Oh, and other places, which we won't mention because it will give too much away. Right, okay. So tonight, when we left, last left the story, uh, Gwinole, the Lady Knight, or mm. Woman Warrior, had been turned into a moo cow. And mm. Anna, would you like to do that moo again? Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. You well, had can you just... it? I can, no. Oh, the players <laughs> chose bits of art they stole off the internet mm. but they, for their character pictures, so please ignore those and just accept the fact that we don't normally film this. We're using Fancy Grounds and we're using Fancy Grounds doesn't have an official Ars Magica app, but it has an unofficial one that was created by uh, Damned. I actually sent him some money. I think I sent him 20 quid just to say thank you for having done it. Because as he says here, you can always PayPal me at that address. So if you like what he did and you think it's useful, all of the characters in this part of the campaign, this covenant, are stored in here. Uh, the library is stored on the party sheet along with the details of the Covenant, the inhabitants, etc. Where's the library? There's the library. And we use images from a selection here, which I make available for the players when I want them to see something. So let's say, for example, they're seeing a lady called Isabel. Then I make a picture of Isabel. Oh, she's pretty. There you go, there's Isabel. Anyway, they're not seeing that at the moment. They're seeing a moo cow. Um, doesn't matter. The other buttons do things, but I'm not sure you can play fancy grounds. Okay, so beginning of the game, everybody is gathered outside the Lion Pub in Glastonbury, opposite the monastery, the Abbey, where recently it's 11:95, and it's about eight years now oh, since the sorry, uh, six years since the bones of King Arthur were dug up, which provoked a whole series of strange events. For once, Father Martin of Bridgewater is nowhere to be seen, and Gwinole has just left the pub, except that she appears to have been turned into a prize heifer. She is a large cow, a very cheerful cow, who drew mm. in an elaborate way, as best she could with her mm. art cow roll, mm. mm. on the floor, indicating that the bishop and a priest were somehow involved. She also dropped a sprig of lavender on the floor, which I think might have been a clue that was noticed uh, by everybody else. Yeah, I placed, it on a, I placed it next to the picture of the cow. As Gwinole charges off into the night, because otherwise Anna is only going to get to play, go moo a lot, we'll now switch in her character Jonah. So we won't use Jelly K just yet. We'll bring Jonah in, if that's all right. So if you switch Jellicay okay. out for the moment... I can't. I haven't got control of Jellicay. I was going to release her. In oh, you time. haven't got control of Jellicay? my character selection screen. Who's you got were control of Jellicay, then? Jonah, you accidentally gave Tom Jellicay. Hang on. I'll <laughs> remove Jellicay. There she goes. There's Jonah. Where's Scriptor now? Tom, are you oh, still in? I'm, I think so. Hang on. No, it's disconnected. No, nope, it's disconnected me. Sorry about that. It's because you had Jelly Kane as your primary character. That's okay. That would be interesting. So if you look down here on the screen, I don't know if you can all see it, but more, uh, more core is a element of Fantasy Grounds, which is designed to allow you to create almost any game system and build campaigns and share. So you can create character sheets, you can set rules up, set dice pulls up, and it works really well. How are you finding, while we're waiting for Tom to come back in, how are you finding playing on Fantasy Grounds, guys? No, I can't. Okay. Right. Uh, cool. Well, I find it quite... Sorry. I find it very good. I, I, li I like it. It's um, it's nice. I mean, I, having used the played Ars Magic as before, when I played Ars Magic before, I was using like um, sheets of paper with um, uh, pencils. So this is actually quite a convenient way of doing it, especially with doing it remotely as well. Uh, fa uh, Fantasy Grounds, I think, is the it has made an awful lot of role-playing games over the past few months actually playable remotely and has actually made them a lot more simpler and actually actually probably more enjoyable to actually role-play. It handles a lot of the maths and accountancy in games like Traveller and other systems a lot more effectively. And as I said, and with a very rules-heavy system like Ars Magica, I think it's very ideal. 
for when we're all playing like this. Why can I not see? There he is, Phil. It helps, yeah. but it helps because of CG preparation me. levels. Okay, I should be coming yeah. back in any second. Phil's busy painting at the moment, little miniature. Uh, building. There you go. Oh, he's pretty. So <laughs> we are, um, we've been using Fancy Grands, and I think three of you bought the license in the end. But actually, because I've got a license, which cost me quite a bit of money, if you buy the kind of professional license, then anybody else can just use the demo version to play in their games, can't, in your games. Yeah, uh, I've uh, got that on subscri subscription as well. Yeah. Chris, Jelly Cray is still showing up on my character list. Okay, I will sort that out now. So I go into characters. I find Jelly Cray. There she is. And it says owned by Tom Knowles. So I change, take ownership of CJ, and then I root clear the owner. Anna, you can now take possession of Jelly Cray. Super, thank you. Uh, for the people watching, this isn't normal. This doesn't normally happen. Um... <laughs> no, we normally have different IP problems. Anna was in a hotel last week and wasn't able to actually roll dice or anything using this part of the system. So she played from Zoom from a phone and Tom made dice rolls with her so he took control of her character. They yeah. can't actually see each other's characters, which is, makes it more amusing. Let's have a quick look at Hill of Flombo. I don't think that's going to give away too much. So we've got his virtues and flaws down here. His stats. We go to main, we've got his spells. If we go to hermetic, it's got his arts and forms and it's not too difficult i mean if we cast arrow of abysmal flame which is a variant spell there you go it's casting total is 41 okay so i'll take that down now and let's start so these are the characters here in play and you've just gathered at the lion and a cow has run off and jumped in chalice well and uh as far as you know she'll be taken up to the barn where the other transformed people are where Desiverius, the senior mage, is trying to turn them back into humans. Oh, good. Okay, three, two, one, time in. Three, two, one, time in. Well, it's probably evening by now, so Jonah's definitely about. And... Afternoon. Jonah's just arrived. Yeah. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Jonah, you're with me. Uh, Jella K went off by herself to, for uh, this, uh, what's his name, Kronos? Kronos the Bastards, I think you called him. Well, we're going to go and uh, try and find him since he seems to transform his appearance somehow. Um, yes, Magus, may I ask what is the reason for all of the cows? Are we starting a farm? No, those are the people of the uh, village who uh, he's turned into uh, cows because as a as uh, was explained, he's a bastard. In the Torah, this will be the work of a demon. Um, be careful in case there are demons. That's why I'm bringing you along with me. Oh. Uh, God seems uh, to have you. you uh, for some reason. <laughs> I, I have merely been blessed to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, and lucky in your shelter of me and my dear wife. Scriptor, what are you and who doing? We'd gone into town. We're looking around for anybody purple-eyed with a streak of purple in their hair or purple clothes. We are carefully looking for a disguised version of my master. You've both got ordinary gift, haven't you? We have, yes. yes. So people will shy away from you, but that doesn't matter because you're not trying to get up close and talk to them. As you walk through the streets, they're fairly bustling, and there's quite a lot of people here. It's a lovely spring day. It's April the 30th. Tomorrow is May, May Day. And the market up at the top end of town is quite busy today. It opens properly tomorrow. And as you're walking up, you hear people excitedly talking about the market. However, can I have a perception awareness roll from you both, please? Is it alertness? No, it's not alertness. Ooh. <clears throat> Scriptor. You notice a discarded basket with lavender in that's laying by a doorway, but it's not actually 
no one's holding it. <coughs> there are mm -hmm. ribbons around it, and it looks quite girly, but it looks as if someone's just dropped it. Probably worth a few pennies. Right. Uh, Guinoli was found holding a piece of lavender. Well, a cow was found with a, a piece of lavender in its mouth, which turned out to be Guinoli. So, I suspect this is some kind of cunning magical trap designed to turn more people into cows. Um... I will open a, my small bag mm -hmm. and is anybody looking my way? Um, not at the moment. Right, I'll very quickly uh, go Rego Herbam. I'm going to try and just quickly lift magically the lavender into my pouch. You're not going to be shouting and waving or making no. gestures. Um, do you have subtle magic or deaf magic? Nope. Okay, just make a straightforward ray go. Yeah. Uh, um, actually, I have Tom's character sheet. How bad is the aura penalty? Uh, the aura penalty here, you're in a town, so it's minus 12 at this point because you're quite close to the abbey. It's you're right by, in fact, you're quite close to the Abbey Church, but you're also near to a pub. Let's say minus 12 for this particular spot. So we'll look up your Rago Herbam. Uh, your Rago Herbam total is 12. So we divide that by two. No, my Rago Herbam. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Because um, looking at that, yeah, I got 21. I've added a three, so 24. Minus the 12 of the aura drops that to a 12. So it goes down to a six. Yeah. Um, I'm going well, to look at the rule book. Uns well, Unseen Porter to lift up normal objects is a five. So, can so I can lift um, oh, uh, I can lift vegetable matter, no problem with the regular herb out of that. Sure. Can you just make an interest so that it's not like, obvious that it's flying through the sky? You can make it look like it's bowling along in the wind or something. Okay, doesn't get my specialty, but oh, there we go. Wow. How? Why are you at plus 13, Tom, on that? Because I have an intelligence of five, a finesse of six, and twist on finesse. <laughs> Bloody hell, you got finesse of six. Cool. Um, <laughs> that is incredible. And I... Exactly <laughs> how it comes to you in a manner that attracts no attention. It just flies over. And it delicately wafts into the air as if a breeze had caught it and uh, then just drops into you, uh, the pouch. Sorry, back in a second. Who? Hey, what are you doing while that's going on? I'm just going to look around and see if anybody notices that and... Um... Take a closer, closer look at some of the market stalls to see what. Some... A... I forgot to put the modifier in, but never mind. Can you make a perception awareness roll, please? And this time it is alertness. Okay. Ooh, that is na uh, nasty outside. Is it snowing? No, it's uh, raining. Okay. It's quite so... loud. It Sounds spank. like uh, stuff is getting below in the back. Right, I'll, spread, I'll spread a confidence point on that. Go on. All right, you spread a confidence point. You look up and you realise that you're opposite the black boar in, not the blue boar, mm -hmm. you walk the black boar. And directly across from the black boar, which is a three story pub, the building that you're next to is a Clovia's. And it looks like it's actually the guild, a guild hall. It's quite a big stone building and it's got quite impressive windows which are built in the Romanesque style. And above where the basket was, balanced somewhat precariously, is an absurdly vulgar purple ceramic chamber pot. As soon as the lavender starts to move, the chamber pot tips its contents of um, both floating and yellowish material straight down and splashes. So if anybody had approached it, then it would have dropped directly on them. Okay. 
and you witness this happen. And the next thing you notice, Scriptor, is a shattering sound as on the cobbles, because there are actually cobbles here, because it's quite a wealthy part of town, the chamber pot smashes and you luckily didn't walk over to it. Okay, how do you two react to that? He is booby trapping things. He's getting particularly dirty tonight. Hmm. Oh yeah, a lot of people would have been uh, when it was under that, they've been very dirty. But yes, that's the purple chamber pot. Eh. Right. Look around. You saw the purple the t- uh chamber pot. You've seen the cover of this lavender. There'll be something on the person of that colour or it's in their hair or their clothes or their eyes. Oh, Tom, it's also worth noting that you know a few things about your master. Obviously, you can ask me questions if you need to. But you remember that he was always gifted. He's martially gifted. He's a warrior. And he often carries a long sword. Okay. So is the purple part of his sigil or just part of his uh, uh, side effect of of Twilight or something? Um, It's part of his sigil. Okay. Phil. Yep. You and Anna come out. uh, You and Jonah. Where are you heading to? Uh, we're going to go around uh, town looking for uh, anything to do with purple. Any person with purple uh, on them, since it's a very, very rare colour. Yeah, absolutely. So previously, the other two have gone uphill towards the top end. So you head down into the lowest part of town, yeah? Yeah. And down towards the chalice well and down towards the tour, but mainly... You're just moving around the edge of the, walking around the edge of the abbey grounds and just checking around the isolated part down here. Can you um, both make a perception folk can roll for me? I was going to ask if I can make an awareness roll, but I can do that as well. Yeah, make an awareness roll then. Perception awareness. Quite good at both. Ooh. Are people going to kill me? <laughs> Sorry, it's clicking on your screen, not mine. Oh. Mm. I think Jonah has keen vision to add to that actually so if it's sight I should have another plus three I'm going to go for some okay Easter is approaching and glancing around you're looking over the wall and what do you see but liturgical robes there is a gentleman wearing purple who's clearly a priest and who is approaching the church, the Great Abbey Church, where he is obviously about to officiate as a mass. But, pardon me, does anything look wrong about his robes? I have seen some before. Why would you have church Uh, No. Do you want to go in and have a look at him close up? No. Uh, I will communicate with Sorry, Phil. Who are you playing? Juris. Juris. Um, Master Juris. That man in there, the churchman in there, is wearing purple. It might just be because he's about to officiate in the service, but I've never seen one wearing purple before. He'll be a bishop. Hmm. Uh, I'll look at him. Does, does he look like uh, the uh, bishop who uh, came along, uh, Bishop of uh, Bath and Wells? He does indeed look like Bishop Saverick. Oh, actually, he was April the 9th. So, okay. He looks like Saverick de Morleon, who is claiming to be the bishop. Yes. You also notice that there's a group of heavily armed knights who are over by the gatehouse and that there are four of them who are fully armed and that they appear to be trying to grab the... Uh, well, they appear to be attempting to st- to push over the watchman and stable their horses. You think there's some kind of confrontation going down? Guy, where are you at the moment? Where are you and Sir Walter? Sir Walter? Um, I believe I was back at the, um, at the Covenant, wasn't I? You've come out now. Well, you two delivered uh, the poor unfortunate cow that used to be Gwinole to the barn, and then you were going to make your way down again. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, so going back into town, yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, um, I guess the best thing to do would be to go into town and have investigate the causes of why everyone's turning into cows. Um, so I'm mounted, aren't I? I've got a horse. You're on a horse, yeah. That's fair enough. Uh, so I will go in, uh, look around to see if there's anything, anything sus- of a suspicious nature. No, um, I haven't got a yeah, anything to do with purple. There's something to do with I know it's something to do with Heather because um Granola the cow was pointing at the Heather. So I have a look around to see if I can see anything Heather relating because I haven't my character hasn't actually encountered anything like suspicious apart from people saying it a cow's course. Um, but isn't aware of the purple thing yet because no one's actually told him. So well I'll do you do notice that halfway down the tour there is a massive, massive patch of bright purple thistles. So, um, Heather. No, thistles. 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 As in Scotch thistles. Yep. Quite the Scottish ones. That's a bit odd. In Glastonbury, it's a bit odd. No. Um, um, we have fairy things nearby. Everything's odd. Sorry, no. Saverick to. Um, yes, I mean Saverick fits Geldwin, not Saverick to Morlian. My apologies. Right. So I will go and. Um, and are these are these something that I would normally notice if they were there or not? <clears throat> CJ. Oh, can you make a roll on that, please? Okay. Perception awareness. A roll on what? Don't know how you managed to keep. Yeah, awareness. Board. Perception right. awareness. Okay. I mean, most of England doesn't know who's king at this point. Uh, excuse me. Second. Henry de Sully is the actual abbot of Glastonbury, and Saverick Fitzgeldwin is the one who is claiming the title as Bishop of Bath and Wells. He's asked the king to combine it for his uh, important role in bringing the king back. So I is particularly back. alert today. Yeah, I think. Uh, Walter. Yep. Yes, Guy is that very... particular patch of thistles is the favourite spot of the cows. Uh, if, when the cows graze on tour, they always graze near that spot, which is why he always comes out the other way and walks around the tour the other direction. Because, of course, he's scared of cows. And you are aware of the fact that it's a particularly boggy area that is filled with cow pats and a particularly unpleasant area where any grog scent would end up covered in thistles. Okay. Right, so... That's perfectly normal. Let's ignore that and carry on. It's fairly normal, just purple. Yes, yep. but you're also aware. You're a mage, aren't you? So you're probably aware with magic. Neither of them are mage, I. That's for Walter and Guy. But he's not a mage. <clears throat> Looking oh. down from the top of the tour, you can see Duris and Jonah who are watching over the wall into the abbey. And mm. you can see Scriptor and who are Flumbo, who are making their way up the hill, towards the top of the hill where the market is. Okay, mm. let's cut back quickly. Close. To... Sorry. No, go on, carry on. What are you doing? So who, is, who is closer than I can sort of like go towards them and ask them, oh, but, well, <laughs> the wall of the Abbey, that sounds interesting. You might go down the, towards the Abbey. All right, we'll do that scene in a minute when you catch up with, when you and Guy catch up with uh, Jonah and with, uh, so what, and with, oh, this is so easy to get confused. Jonah, really. Dura, <laughs> what are you and Jonah up to? You can see what's going on in there. Saverick de Geldwin's turned up with some knights and is heading over. He himself is going to the abbot's house. I am not going to go and intervene because uh, there's far too many of them. And they'll end up starting a fight, I expect. Um, master, I could... Uh, pick their pockets and sort of um, possibly loose their horses um, and run away if you want to. Or sneak. No, that might get you in trouble. Yes. And uh, possibly get you killed. Mm. Okay. Who? Scriptor. In God's hand. Yep. Right. What are you two doing? Can we see any other sign of purple? Uh, can you see any other purple? Um, not Otherwise, we're walking in the direction of purple at this point. Looking down, you can see the Abbey Gateway. 
and yep. you can see that Brother Bernard, who usually stands outside and greets people who arrive and takes them to the infirmary or to the hospital, he appears to be laying on the floor with a bloody nose and looking slightly upset. You can see that there's a whole crowd of people, probably two or three hundred people, which is a huge crowd for the period, milling around up at the top. And they appear to be spending, they appear to be shouting and crying out in excitement. And there's a some kind of festival going down up at the top or fair. And there's a, a massive hubbub. And you can see a number of people. Oh, actually, yes. Can you make. Can you both make a perception awareness roll? Difficulty will be nine. No, six. Is it, is really obvious. Is it alertness? Yeah, yeah, why not? It's difficulty six. You're both just kind of looking around. Oh, if it's awareness, we both get the bonus. No, this is amazing. Hey, we both just scrape for six. Oh, let's go scrape. Right, I am going to put a map up. Let's go to images. Um... Have I got streets? That'll do. We'll go to streets one. There you go. It's a bit of a rough map, but it will do for this. So down there's the Abbey Gatehouse. You're heading up this way. Let's put a couple of Magi on the map. Let's create that. So the combat tracker has got characters we don't need on it. Oh, streets on town map. Town map is a different town, where's yellow? Uh, Granola got into a scrape. Oh, is, there a, is the town map one still in there? Yeah. I might use that. I'll have a quick look at it. Let me just check. Streets one is just black at the moment, CJ. I so, can't yeah. see the town map on my list. I can see the town map. What's it's it called? The night. There's one oh, called right. town map, town which is... Map. One word. Town map. Because it might yeah. be more suitable for what I want. Oh, no. in there. And five oh. nights. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Let's take those off. Uh, delete all tokens. You have a cow token. I've drawn a line on it, so I'll remove that. Right, so, yeah, this is quite appropriate, actually, because there's the pub. You're heading up the hill. So let's just drop you two onto the combat tracker. There's Hua Flombo as he gets to the corner. Uh, there's Scriptor walking next to him. Two pounds folk good. around. Hang on. Yes, I will use bandits <laughs> for townsfolk. These are just innocent passers by. They're not actually bandits. I'm just putting some people on because the town is busy. That means don't blow them up here. We think they're innocent passers by. Um, yeah, target. Uh, just to make, to make sure. <laughs> I will use this one. As I said, I'll, I will make sure with two fireballs if they're innocent bystanders. Right, this chap here, God who me. I should have actually, I'll call him, I'll use the Avalon Grog one, because that's roughly looks, oh no, I won't. So Gerard. That's the one. Red Knight, I don't want to use that. I'll use the Avalon Grog figure. There we go. You haven't got someone with a hooked nose and um, Jewish beads. No, I can find some. If you want to find a character no, Jewish to you, that's fine. I can do it. Right. Okay. Hide NPC and that one there. I need to take off somehow or just ignore it. Okay. I've put a figure on. This fellow here with the red round him. Can you see the one I mean? Yep. As he walks around the corner, you notice that he's carrying a long sword. He's wearing a silk shirt, or not silk, it will be very fine linen shirt. And he's uh, dressed with a massive purple cloak, which looks extraordinarily fine. It's more indigo than purple, more dark blue than purple, but it certainly falls within the scope of purplish. And I'll start him there. So he starts in the space where the other bike was. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just do, um, well, let's just ask you what your reaction is. Oh, I was just asked to find people wearing purple, so I'll just whisper. Is that purple? You guys are further down here, so you haven't seen him yet. Only those two have seen him so far. Okay. Who? What are you doing? 
I'll point out the purple person to you on the script door, because he's not sat right next to me. Scriptor? Yes, I am just thinking, do I have any spells which might be like subtly castable? Do. <coughs> uh, cast a low-level spell and see if it bounces off his partner. He's got a mop of blonde hair, yeah. a metal helmet, He's wearing some leather armors, yeah. and he looks wealthy. Does he have a sword? He's got a long sword hanging by his left hand. Hugh, he looks suspiciously like um, my master in disguise. Let's try something stealthy. Right, so what I'm going to do is... Can I... Uh, you um, do remember most of my magics are not stealthy, particularly in town. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I try and walk around the corner here, so basically I'm trying to get out of the line of sight yeah, of yeah. the townsfolk, so I'm not completely obvious to them, and then attempt a call to slumber. That one will walk to there. That one's going that way. That one walks around the corner. That one walks around the corner. That one goes that way. Uh, that one there should be there. Sorry. Right. So you're going to try a call to slumber. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 feet. Voice range. Yep. You're so trying to be about this, about it, you? Okay, can you make me first of all then a dex, um, no, an in stealth roll to find somewhere where you're not overlooked? Oh, I do not have stealth. So just straight interval with lots of botch dice. Go for it. This uh, guy that sh- here... That, sh- that should have been a nine. Well, okay. It did not add my int on. Okay, no problem then. You make it. This guy here, yeah, is mm-hmm. not paying any attention to you. And in fact, he's about to go into that building. So you get okay. a line across. You can see the guy. Yeah. What is the spell on call to slumber? What is this range on call to slumber? Voice range. Okay, make a casting roll, please. I presume I have to stick the minus 12 for all on again. You do. Then that's aura four, but it's dominion, so it's triple the aura. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is st- so this is a Rago Mentem spell. Yeah. Uh, you rolled a total of eighteen. What's the level of the spell? Ten. So there's a mere eight points of penetration. Oh, hang on. Eight points of penetration plus my penetration skill. I don't have any, so that's only eight. Okay, so Rago Mentum controls minds. He starts to feel very, very tired. And I look up Rago Mentum quickly. Lloyd, you might want to start thinking about what your follow-up move is going to be. Well, if the guy falls asleep... Well, if he's cast a call to something... (laughs) If I suddenly hear, Hugh, he's got a magic resistance, I start throwing fireballs. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. No, you watch him yawn and stagger around. He sits down on the stairs here. And there are, I don't know, rules about Wizards Wars. Remove that. And at this point, he just sits down on here and I'll rotate him because he's falling asleep. He start, he'll, By the time you actually get ready to act, he's almost snoring. I'm almost disappointed. Maybe he didn't put his palmer up this morning. Fireball him just in case. Yeah, who starts goes around turning people into cows and doesn't put their palmer up? You'd exactly, to yes. Not, <laughs> it's a habit with us, anyway. And a senior major of House Tuesdays would have a half decent palmer magic. It's quite a coincidence, though, that a guy wearing an incredibly expensive indigo or purple cloak has just come walking down the road towards you. Oh, well, I will slowly wander over in his direction. Okay. And will, stood I, over him. Uh, I can, because the voice range here is quite small if I'm stood right over him. Let's attempt opposing the silent question on his sleeping person. Do it. 
I will walk up and stand next to Scriptor at this point. Right. I'm going to take a level of fatigue doing that. Posing the same question. What um, question are you asking? I'm going to uh, ask in his mind, where did you get the purple cloak? Oh, it was really nice of the old beggar lady. I couldn't believe that her husband that had kept this cloak that he claimed once belonged to an emperor of far, far Constantinople, Constantinople and that she gave it to me. But I can't help but wondering... Why am I so tired now? Right, I'll slap him awake. Ah! And, and I'll go, hey, hey, you, wake up. Wake up. What? Don't fall don't, <laughs> you're, fall, you're falling asleep on the steps. Be very, you know, don't fall asleep right in the middle of town or wearing oh. clothing that fine. You never know what's going to happen. He gulps one, yawns, and then stands up, shakes himself, and drops his hand. To, uh, he's finding you quite frightening, and he drops his hand to his long sword and says, I am a master swordsman, sir. I can protect my... Who are you? Can you make a presence plus some kind of role, both you and Hugh, bearing in mind that Hugh, do you have blatant gift? No, I have normal gift. Okay, roll those dice. I have, I don't know, dab, internal aura, diabolic. Taint? Ah, this is. Oh. Uh, no, no, diabolic past doesn't give you a taint. No, he's a diabolic taint. He's never met me before, so this will be an initial meeting, a bit of sort of charm. Nine, so that's only actually a six when you take the gift out into effect. Ah, uh, sorry, he bows low. My name is Henri. I am said to be one of the deadliest swordsmen in all of England. I fight as a mercenary for whoever pays good coin. You excuse me. I have come here for the new fair that has been announced, but uh, I was up in Bar when I heard of it. I must say that so far I haven't seen much stock that interests me. Ah. Still, I understand they will be have swords and uh, weaponry, and craftsmen from all over England will be gathering here this week. So far, it seems to be mainly cattle. Who would have thought that Glastonbury would have to have such a great cattle fair? Indeed. Indeed. Who? Yeah. Put your resistance roll, please. You're at minus six. You want to get high. Is that um, Power Magica? No, this is just oh. personality trait, fear cows. Right, where is my personality trait? So roll a d10 trait. and subtract six. He's talking about them horned beasties. How do you react? I shudder and take two, three paces back. And is there, is there any, any cows actually around? Not that you can see yet, but you've just heard that they're going to start a cattle fair here. They have opened a cattle market in your town. That's terrible. It will actually burn immediately. What, and it is correct to proper to do so. <laughs> okay. Guy, okay, everybody else, I'll leave you two for the moment. Anna, Guy, so uh, we've got Jonah, Guy, Sir Walter, and Duris, yeah? Yeah. Am I now in the town now, yeah? Yeah, you're all together. You've met up down by the Abbey. So I'll close this picture down now. We need to help the gate guard up because apparently he's been beaten up. Okay. So you walk around the corner, and there is Bertrand laying on the floor, looking pretty rough, actually. So he's laying on the floor. He's not at all happy. Go on, then. What do you want to do? Was it knights? Yes, sir. Knights, they came in and jumped me, sir. I didn't stand a chance. I mean, if I could have done anything, I would have done, sir. But, oh, it was awful, sir. Awful, I say. Are you are you all right, sir? No. Do I look all right? They laid about me and beat me, beat me badly, sir. Sir Walter, they've come to get the abbot, Abbot Hugh. They say that he's a traitor to the king. Fine, I shall sort. I shall take my sword to the island. I have um. Purple. Okay, this is a model of Glastonbury Abbey. 
the wall that you were walking on, here's the town wall at the bottom of the picture. So you're down here and you've just come in through the gate. You get the idea of just how impressive the Abbey Church is from that picture, I think, don't you? Mm. Well, so it isn't like that now, not since the Reformation. It's all ruins. Yeah. Should we go for a doctor, dearest? Master dearest? No! You've got to rescue Sir Henry. He's try they're trying to take him off. Saverick Fitzgeldwin claims that he's the lawful bishop. I mean, Abbot, that the Bishop of Bath and Wells holds the see of Glastonbury. You can't let him take the abbot away, sir. They're none of them godly men. Die strings his bow. <laughs> they were godly men. They wouldn't treat God's people so. <sighs> yes, this... Uh, the bishop, he was the one who uh, attacked the Magi uh, uh, at the castle, wasn't he? Or he was the one who was uh, dealing with stuff in the castle. Yes, he's the one who got rid of his predecessor and yeah. also got rid of the former um, Castellan of the Tower of London. Yeah. He's the one that kidnapped Ranulf de Glanville. He murdered Ranulf de Glanville and his predecessor. Oh no, what is it? He kidnapped Heloise. And he also kidnapped Heloise, though he wasn't interested in Heloise, so just left her where you rescued her. Well, that was inconvenient, so let's go get these knights. <laughs> I mean, uh, Sir Walter, what should we do? Okay, as you make your way in, you see Saverick is gone over to the cloisters, where he is going into the uh, into the refectory and is having the bell rung to call all the monks, the chapter, together. So that's what's going on. I mean, most of you don't know very much about it, but Duras has been, Duras knows enough. Phil? What yep. does the ringing mean? They are calling all of the monks together, Phil, okay? Yeah. Okay. They're calling, so... they're calling uh, the brothers together. Yeah. Stop painting for a minute, then and join us. Oh, I'm not painting. Now I'm a Jew. What are you doing now? I'm uh, putting models together because you won't let me paint. <laughs> right, sorry, you were saying. Yeah, uh, they're bringing uh, the, monk, uh, the brothers together. I expect they're going to ambush uh, Jabbert when he gets here, but personally... Uh, I don't think it's our problem. With the cow. Unless we're all the two by the May guy, it's nothing to do with us. Yes. Guy? Uh, it's, it's not my place to say. The highest ranking person here is Sir Walter. Sir Walter? Right, so we're going to find out who... You said that they're coming, they're coming to get um, captured. So what was the name of the fellow they're coming to get? Henry de Sully. Right, so we need to go find him first of all, make sure he's safe. <clears throat> so I'll lead the um, uh, I'm the highest ranking person, of all the Magus, but Sir Walter is. I don't, I don't, I don't rank the, the May guy, but I can, I can go in and in terms of like mundanes, I'm the highest ranking mundane, aren't I? Yep, I quite a significant factor, yes. Right, so we go, we go find um, we go and find him and make sure he's safe. Okay, as you go in, you start to walk over. You can see the Great Abbey Church, you can see uh, the cloister on the right, and you can see the refectory where the monks are gathering. You know that uh, Fitz Gelderwin made his way to the abbot's house, but he's since left there and made his way to the refectory, which suggests that who is not there. Let's just make... What skill do you want to use to try and find him? Tracking? I might be able to make a hunt. I mean, if I'm there, you, got, yes, you can't I'm... really track an abbot through a monastery. It's not, not your uh, terrain. It's not smell. a bad idea. Wouldn't the uh, abbot smell of some it, kind yeah. of incense? Somerset Law. Will I know my way around? Or the... wine. He, the know abbot your way around. Like the smell of wine. Yeah, uh, CJ. Uh, well, I know my way to uh, Jabbot's. Uh, uh, know where the abbot's quarters are. You've been there before. Yeah, uh, I'll lead them there then. Okay, you get over to the abbot's quarters, and as you arrive, there is a groaning from inside. Oh! Oh! Okay. 
You do. Uh, Bards the door open. You hit your shoulder on the door. It is bolt. It is closed and barred. It, apart from the inside, yeah. Yep. So, if he's been injured, then whoever's injured him must be still in there, unless there's another way out of the building. Oh. The only thing you find an axe. Uh, can I pick the lock? I'm going to try and pick the lock first. You have leisure domain. Oh. I have leisure domain as it happens. Okay, can you yeah. make a quickness leisure domain roll? CJ, can oh, I? No, no, I can't. I'll have to be a dex leisure domain roll. Can I take my time? Yeah, yeah. take your time. Sure, go for it then. So I've got minus three quickness. The outside and sit in a window or some other way into the, into the room. Yeah, okay, so Walter starts to look around for another way in. There is an upstairs window with shutters that seems to be partially open. Oh, I'll try that way. Okay, can you... So you're making a strength athletics to go up the... No, dex athletics to go up the outside. Up, outside. Yep, okay, just let me get right. the... Jonah, as you... Go on, make your roll then. I just did. No, just, um, yeah, just Walter, me. you're rolling. Uh, I think the door is still there by the time I unlock it. Hang on, where's my... I've lost... Oh, there it is. Dex, Dex Athletics. Dex, yep, Ath Dex Ath Athletics. You're climbing up. Cool. Oh, just going to get that. You've left your horse, so you're climbing up the outside of the building. Yeah. Let's find that one on you. Uh, da, 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 da. I can't find it on you when I need it. I've got athletics. Are you sure I have? Oh. Don't appear to have athletics, funny enough. I just have to use decks. That's right. Oh, well. Uh, Let's see. Okay, Tom. Yes. Oh, uh, well, uh, Walter uh, successfully climbs up to the window and throws it open. As yeah. you're clambering in, there's a fine feather bed. There is a cabinet. And over on the side, above the cabinet, there is a mural that's been painted on the wall that shows the Holy Grail and what you assume to be King Arthur and Guinevere. It's right. been painted onto the plaster quite recently and mm -hmm. it's very correct. brightly coloured. You're pretty sure this is the abbot's bedroom. There is a huge fireplace with a stone mantle and on top of it there is a shiny golden grail which you may recognise because uh, after all it was made by um, Ava wasn't it? Or Right, yeah. Not the real grail, then. No, it's the egg, the other egg cup, not the real yeah, grail. Ava just created the gold. Uh, Scriptor made the cup itself. Oh, yeah, script, this is Scriptor's egg cup, the one that you managed to pass off as the Holy Grail. No, it's not the real Holy Grail that you'd thrown through the window. Right, Guy, you're downstairs when, to your shock and absolute astonishment, Jonah walks up and reveals an incredible glassness talent and picks the lock on the door. The actual lock turns out to have not been locked so he unlocks okay. it again very quickly and then takes a dagger and lifts the bar on the other side which falls to the ground. You push the door open and Jonah laying on the floor groaning is someone you recognise as Ewan Late for dinner. I'm here to the the sacristan. Oh. Oh! Oh! He kicked me in the cods! He kicked me in the cods! Punch me on the nose, and then the other fellow hit me over the back of the head. Were they knights? Yeah, four of them. They said they were here to arrest Fitzgeldwin as a as a traitor to the crown. Where is Fitz? Sorry, not so, sorry. They were here <laughs> with Fitzgeldwin to attract to <laughs> arrest yeah. Henry as a traitor to the crown. Where'd they go? Henry wasn't here. He saw them coming and fled. I don't know where. Where would you flee if you were being pursued by knights? Thank you in the chair. I don't say that aloud, but I glance at <laughs> the others in a sort of, well, the covenant way. Just at that point, you hear a loud crunch of somebody landing above your feet upstairs. Uh, I, hang on. I've got... Um... No, I haven't got good hearing. I've got keen vision. That's right, you're aware it's the Walter climbing in through the window. Duris, Guy, what are you two doing? Okay, so we've either got to go to the church or back home. Duris? 
we should go and uh, get instructions from the May guy. Should we check the church to see if he's hiding in there first? Will yeah. knights respect holy ground these nights? Yeah. They should do, yeah. Yeah, but they're also working for the bishop that they claim is the right bishop, correct? Correct. Uh, let's check the church and then go back home. I mean, uh, to the covenant. Okay. Is that a good idea, Juris? Yeah. Hugh. Sorry, I'm going to cut back now. Tom. Yes. What are Scriptor and who up to now? What? So this is not the guy. This is not the guy we're looking for. No, no. Okay. This is an old beggar lady gave him that cloak. So clearly, that was the last person who um, my master yeah. described themselves as. I'll take a look at the guild hall. Okay. Um, if there's no obvious sign of this old beggar or any other purple signs. Nope. Hugh. Yes. How about we go to the edge of the fair? Um, we'll keep you over one side, well away from where the creatures you don't like are, and I'll make my way through the fair. Okay. I'll try and... Because f- let's face it, in a big crowd is probably the best place for him to um, try and hide and make chaos. Yes, that will be, yeah. And also... Let's face it, it'll be a chance for him to try and sell more people as um, you know what. Yes. You two have such excellent taste in master. Okay, you make your way up. I'm just going to stop sharing the picture I was sharing. Okay, you two make your way up to the fair. As you approach it, you suddenly hear a strange noise ahead of you. A noise that might have quite a strong effect on who? Mirroring. So, yeah, that sounded like a moo in the distance. No, distant moos are fine. It's only if they're right next to me, I have an issue with them. Okay, you're going to make your way up though, yeah? Yep. Okay, you make your way up. And you are now approaching what has turned into a field where the pagan rite took place and where you attack the demon, yeah, has now got large numbers of pens in which dirty, smelly cattle are being driven from all over the levels. And as you approach, Hugh, this is your idea of hell. Yes. However, in the middle of it, Standing on a podium and holding forth, there is a man who's gesturing wildly and appears to be conducting a cattle sale. And the reason you notice him is because he has on his head a large black floppy hat, best of mine, and in it there are three purple feathers. Right. I'll need to sit down for a couple minutes to get my breath back because I was slightly fatigued from my last uh, casting of a spell. Okay. You this? Over when you need one. Is it going to come some kind of personality role for me to proceed any further at this point? You can spend a confidence point if you want to overcome it. Move away. Rarely. Or you can make a personality trait roll. I'll spend a confidence point for the moment. Can you make the roll first? Okay, you have to roll by being thing. terrified, though, yeah? Yep. Okay, how are you coping with being taken to your first castle market? I, I'm fairly uneasy at this point, and I'm staying very much on the edge of this. I'm going to the script, or either we, di- uh, either we find out what's going on here, or I'm going to end end this market fairly quickly. Okay, okay. Um... Mm. Right, under cover of cattle auction, I'll walk up a bit towards the auctioneer. And um, 
waving my arms like I'm trying to place a bid for the cow, I'll um, shout something in Latin. <laughs> this is going to be opposing the side of the question. So this is this is technically if he if it is my parents, it is scrying on my sedanas, but um he's just tried to um, get a whole bunch of mundane slaughtered cattle, so I think the question was to shoot him first. If we can prove it, this pretty much counts as um, Go for it. Jeopardize. Right. So uh what's the all penalty here? Is this minus twelve as well? No, nope. up here the all penalty is minus three. You're on the edge of town. Excellent. Also, um, oh dear. He's transformed one of your grogs. Isn't that, I don't know, depriving him of another magus? What question are you asking? Um, who are you? Well, ever since that nobleman gave me the job of being cattle auctioneer here, I've been very proud, me, honest John, to do the job. And he gave me a hat as well. Right, okay. Right, okay. Right, so I'm going to look around looking for nobles or beggars who have some purple on them. Okay. Looking around, you suddenly realise that loads of people are wearing neckerchiefs or little hats or purple flowers and that purple, an extraordinarily rare colour that most people rarely see in their life, is suddenly being worn by people everywhere you begin to think that your master, your parents, may actually be trying to work for your destruction, though you don't really care. But yes, what are you going to do? Right, Hugh, let us, let's move you towards somewhere safer. Perhaps we should go down to the Abbey. Yes, yes, something that doesn't have cows in it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hugh, just look at the number of people wearing purple. They've been handing out the purple clothes like there's no tomorrow. How much silver does he earn a year? Because that is quite an expensive thing to do. Um, is he been de 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 destabilising um, the currency in some place? Maybe. Or maybe he's had some cunning scheme of, um, I don't know, Magically conjuring up from the seabed hundreds of thousands of um, the right sort of shellfish or something. Who knows? You remember that your master, when you were young, one of the first spells he taught you was an imaginem, creo imaginem effect to make a pole arm. Sorry, a muto imaginem effect yeah. to make a pole arm look purple. Right. Well, he could just be doing magic on it all. Um, but unless you're good at detecting um, active spell effects. Because as far as I know, none of us are particularly good at detecting magics, are we? No. No, no, there's um, a covenant up, up north I heard is fairly decent of it, but unfortunately, there's nobody around here. Yep. This is the scene, roughly, that you could, you know... Actually, let's go back a bit. There you go. This is what you're looking at. Right. Any response to that here? Fear, I suspect. Fear. There's a, there's a definite distance or several paces back that I take when I'm faced with these with this with this de de deadly walking beef that, that's going moo, yes. You're not scared of demons, but you're terrified of cows. Yes. De demons I can deal with. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I've dealt with several of them at this point. Okay, the rest yeah, of the, 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 the walking, the walking, um, not dead beef is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And no one tell Major Desdivarius, or he'll leave the covenant, spend all its money on cattle here, mm -hmm. and we'll never see.